Economic and Monetary Union was established by the Treaty of Maastricht in 1992. This represented a major leap forward in the process of European integration, as the member states of the European Union uh, put together the foundation for the creation of the euro, which became the currency of the majority of the member states starting in 1999. And yet, economic and monetary union, as it was established by the Treaty of Maastricht, was a compromise. On the one hand, uh, the member states decided to transfer their monetary powers to a supranational institution, the fully federalized European Central Bank, which had uh, total control on the monetary policy of the Eurozone. But on the other hand, the member state instead refrained from transferring the same amount of power to supranational institutions in the fiscal and economic policy domain. Rather, they decided to maintain this area as a national area of state competencies subject to coordination among the member nations. Now, of course, this asymmetric architecture uh, presented potential problems, which both lawyers and economists emphasized at that time. So it is precisely to sustain this incomplete structure that the member state at the time of the Treaty of Maastricht also decided to complement EMU with two important elements. To begin with, they adopted a stability and growth pact that set very precise deficit and debt rules that member states had to respect in their budgetary policy. And to make these rules even more binding, they also introduced a no bailout clause, which basically guaranteed that no state or EU institution would come to the rescue of another member state facing a fiscal crisis. Now, this architecture survived fairly successfully for the first decade of existence of the Eurozone. But the explosion of the Euro crisis in late 2009 uh, profoundly shook the foundation of this constitutional settlement and prompted the member states and the EU institutions to respond to the crisis by adopting a series of important legal and institutional reforms. These reforms have profoundly transformed economic and monetary union. To begin with, the EU institutions and the member states have adopted measures which have strengthened the budgetary rules of the Eurozone. For example, the six pack and the two pack have tightened budgetary constraints and the fiscal compact adopted by 25 member states of the EU outside the EU legal order have even oblige signatory parties to introduce a balanced budget amendment in their own constitutions. Secondly, the EU institutions and the member states also put together important new mechanisms designed to support states facing a fiscal crisis. The European Financial Stabilization Mechanism, European Financial Stability Facility, and finally, the European Stability Mechanism, which is a treaty concluded by the Eurozone countries outside the framework of the EU legal order. Well, all these mechanisms have created bailout funds that have supported countries facing financial difficulties, including Greece, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, and Cyprus. And last but not least, in response to the Euro crisis, member states have also designed new systems of governance for example, the European semester was put together as a process whereby member states coordinate more closely their domestic budgetary policy. And also, even new institutions were set up in response to the crisis. Most notably, the Euro Summit, which is a special composition of the European Council, bringing together only the heads of states and government of the Eurozone member states. Nevertheless, despite this important set of reforms, EMU after the crisis still remains fairly asymmetric. And this is why a dominant role in managing the crisis was ultimately played by the European Central Bank.